Welcome to Offer Vault News. I'm your host, Eddie Grand. Facebook is on the warpath against black hat affiliate marketers. If you're involved in affiliate marketing, especially black hat, you need to see this information. But first, here are the top headlines this week. The FBI secretly demands a ton of consumer data from credit agencies. Now, lawmakers want answers. Recently released documents revealed that for years, the FBI has secretly demanded vast amounts of Americans' consumer and financial information from the largest U.S. credit agencies. Known as national security letters, the FBI uses these legal powers as leverage over credit giants to give up non-consent information, such as records of purchases and locations, that the agency deems necessary in national security investigations. But these letters have no judicial oversight and are typically filed with gag orders, preventing the recipient from disclosing the demand to anyone else, including the target of the letter. Very few tech companies, including Facebook, Google, and Microsoft, have disclosed that they have ever received one of these national security letters. In 2015, after the Edward Snowden leaks that revealed the great lengths the U.S. government takes its surveillance operations, the law changed allowing recipients to petition the FBI to be cut loose from the gag provisions, giving them the right to publish the letters. Most tech companies have done this through transparency reports, which inform their users of government demands for their user data. But other major data collectors like credit agencies haven't published any of their figures. Three lawmakers, Democratic Senators Ron Wyden and Elizabeth Warren and Republican Senator Rand Paul have sent letters to Equifax Experian and TransUnion expressing their alarm as to why the credit giants have failed to disclose the number of government demands for consumer data they receive. Because your company holds so much potentially sensitive data on so many Americans and collects this information without obtaining consent from these individuals, you have a responsibility to be transparent about how you handle that data, the letters said. Unfortunately, your company has not provided information to policymakers or the public about the type or the number of disclosures that you have made to the FBI. It's unknown how many letters were issued to the credit agencies since the legal powers were signed into law back in 2001. According to the New York Times, the national security letters to credit agencies were a small but telling fraction of the overall half million FBI issued demands made to date. Just to reiterate that, the FBI sent out half a million of these letters demanding user information. Think about that. Banks and financial institutions, as well as universities, cell service and internet providers have all been targets of these letters. The senators have given the credit agencies until December 27th to disclose the number of demands each has received. WhatsApp plans to sue companies that abuse the platform for bulk messaging. According to the platform, they will not tolerate the abuse of WhatsApp business functions to spam customers. They're going to clamp down on bulk messaging by enforcing legal action. WhatsApp is very popular with consumers, boasting an estimated 300 million active daily users. The Facebook-owned company has a massive user base, which led to the development of the WhatsApp Business App and the WhatsApp Business API. The business application and API can be used by businesses, large and small, to manage customer relationships and communication, as well as promote products and discounts. But on the flip side, having a direct line to consumers also opens up a pathway to abuse and spam. The messaging platform wants to enforce restrictions on bulk and automated messaging, both of which can be extremely irritating to consumers and are a violation of WhatsApp terms of service. 
The company aims to reinforce the private nature of our platform and keep users safe from abuse by making the consequences of breaking their terms of service very clear to business operators. Millions of accounts have already been barred for abusive behavior. But WhatsApp says that some of the companies are persistent in their attempts to avoid the machine learning systems developed to track abuse. WhatsApp is fed up with these companies and has begun using legal action against offenders. WhatsApp will take legal action against those we determine are engaged in or assisting others in abuse that violates our terms of service, such as automated or bulk messaging or non-personal use, even if that determination is based on information solely available to us off our platform, the firm says. Nothing in this announcement limits WhatsApp's right to enforce its terms using technology, such as banning accounts based on machine learning qualifiers, and WhatsApp will continue to do so. WhatsApp recently revealed that the platform will no longer support older devices, potentially impacting millions of handset owners. Android phones running versions earlier than 2.3.3 also known as Android Gingerbread or Apple OAS 8, will not be able to use WhatsApp after February 1st, 2020. Users should update their mobile operating system or just get a new phone if you wanna keep using WhatsApp. Revy Media sells affiliate marketing network to accelerate focus on PX platform business. Revy Media Group is a performance marketing technology company offering sophisticated lead generation and lead exchange solutions. It is parent company to PX Inc., the world's first transparent customer acquisition platform. Revy Media has announced the sale of its affiliate marketing network to Mocum Ads, a Netherlands-based company. The divestment enables the company to solely focus upon the growth of PX, its platform business that has grown significantly since its September 2018 launch. We had been operating two separate entities and the affiliate business just was not core to our strategy of building out a transparent marketplace, said Franz Van Huel, co-founder and CEO of Revy Media Group. This gives us a chance to dedicate all our efforts to PX and the unique solutions that it provides to brands and publishers. All assets of Revy Media's affiliate network will now be operated by Mocum Ads in Amsterdam. The Revy Media brand name will, however, remain with Revy Media Group. We've been active in mobile content for some time and the Revy Media Network is a great opportunity for us to expand our business, said Mark D. Groot, co-founder of Mocum Ads. We're very excited and quite confident that we can grow their existing partnerships under the Mocum Ads name. Terms of the transaction were not disclosed. And now for our main story, Facebook declares war on black hat affiliate marketers. Facebook has always had a love-hate relationship with affiliate marketers, profiting billions of dollars from their advertising spend while having to deal with some of the most creative, technically sophisticated, and financially motivated marketers on the planet bending and breaking their rules. After facing significant ongoing scrutiny from government regulators, Facebook has started to take aggressive legal and criminal action against black hat marketers that purchase advertising accounts to run cloaked campaigns that directly violate the Facebook terms of service. Seemingly with no end in sight and an obvious fear that if they don't clean up the problem, they themselves will become responsible for the harm caused to consumers. There's a very good chance you've seen one of these black hat ads in your feed. Here's how it works. Cloaking. For those of you who have been living on a deserted island for the last decade, the term cloaking refers to using a clean landing page that complies with Facebook's terms of service to trick the advertising approvals team into approving the ad and routing users to that landing page using a redirected link. Once the advertisement is approved, the black hat marketer changes the backend link to their fraudulent 
money-producing page and use sophisticated fingerprinting technology to try and stop Facebook from detecting it after the fact. That's how they're able to fly under the radar. These ads make millions of dollars through subscription traps that use a tabloid style photo of a celebrity without their consent, accompanied by a scandalous fake headline. When clicked, the ad goes to a landing page that looks similar to a news or magazine webpage, but it's all smoke and mirrors. Fake news article about a celebrity, fake website, and the hook, line, and sinker is the false claim that the featured celebrity has discovered an amazing new product that the consumer can try for just a small fee. They're selling products like skin creams, acai berries, raspberry ketones, Garcinia cambogia, muscle offers, dick pills, and more. The use of the celebrity and the fake gossip headline is what tricks people into believing that the ad and article are legit. So they click the ad and it takes them to a webpage that pitches them on what appears to be a no risk product trial for a small shipping fee with limited or no disclosure of what's to come. Then within a couple weeks of ordering, the consumer gets smacked with another much larger charge that appears on their credit card account because they've been tricked into enrolling in a monthly subscription program that is very expensive and very hard to get out of. Millions of consumers have been duped by these free trial scams. According to BuzzFeed News, the one demographic that has fallen victim the most are baby boomers. And Facebook has paid out more than $4 million to reimburse victims. Mark Zuckerberg has had enough. Facebook is waging war on black hat affiliate marketers and here's some recent actions they've already taken. Facebook shut down Ads Inc., one of the biggest and most successful black hat marketing companies. Now you may not have ever heard of them, but chances are you've seen one of their fake celebrity ads on Facebook or Google. They even had a team of stay-at-home moms that recruited friends and family into renting out their Facebook pages that the company then used to run the advertising scams. Well, Facebook made sure to put all of that to an end as Ads Inc. is no more. Also recently, Facebook sued a Hong Kong-based company and two Chinese citizens for using malware with deceptive Facebook ads that often featured celebrities. Being outside of America is no longer a safe haven for marketers that are pushing the envelope into illegal territory. Facebook is waging this war all over the globe. Earlier this month, Facebook fired a contractor that was taking bribes to reactivate banned ad accounts. Here's their statement to BuzzFeed News about the situation. This behavior is absolutely prohibited under our policies and the individual is no longer working with Facebook. We're continuing to investigate the allegations and we will take any further necessary action. And you know what company this contractor was linked to? Ads Inc. So it all comes full circle. Facebook shut down Ads Inc. and fired the contractor that was accepting bribes from them. But according to a former Ads Inc. employee, there are several moles within Facebook that work with black hat marketing companies. All of these fake ads, scams, and controversies are making a lot of headlines, causing Facebook to look incompetent and corrupt giving them a major incentive to make an example out of as many of these marketers as they can find in an effort to avoid facing government regulation. Moral of the story, you do not want to be caught in their crosshairs. Take your talents and go legit. White hat marketing is the best way to avoid a potential legal battle with Facebook or the FTC. So all you affiliate marketers out there, let us know your thoughts on this issue. Should Facebook be held responsible for the harm caused by black hat marketing? What do you think will be the end results of this war? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below or feel free to email us at tips at offervault.com. 
We want to hear from you. We want to know about people who didn't pay. Tell us about people running scams, people that ripped you off. We want to hear about all of this. Tell us your stories. Send everything to tips at OfferVault.com and make sure you subscribe to our channel so you never miss a new episode of Offer Vault News. As always, I'm your host, Eddie Grand, and I'll see you next time.